I'll give you a little bit of a brief rundown for anyone who hasn't joined us for an insight session before. Uh, my name's Caroline and uh, the three of us make up the education and outreach team here at APRA AMCOS. So our job is to bring you all kinds of things like this, which is includes our insight sessions and we run um, 101 sessions as well, which happen every couple of months. We've got another one coming up soon. If you'd like to know anything more about the basics of APRA AMCOS, we're always here to help you out. So please do um, follow any of these sessions and we'll be announcing some more insight sessions coming up shortly as well. Um, but tonight, uh, as I said, we're talking about using other people's music. Nikki has put together a fantastic presentation for you. The way that this will work is Nikki will take over and, and run through a presentation all about using other people's music, cover songs, arrangements, and everything to do with that. Now, I, I do uh, know we can't see you, and uh, but what we can do, the way we can interact with you, is for you to use um, the Q&A facility at the bottom of the screen. Now, if you have any questions for us, please do pop that into the Q&A. We will be doing our best in the background. Glenn and I will be typing away, trying to answer your questions. And we'll all come together again at the end to have a bit of a chat about anything outstanding that we haven't been able to address um, within that Q&A facility. I would suggest, though, um, maybe hold off just for a while to ask those questions because chances are Nikki will get to the topic that you are wondering about. So good idea to... to you know, let her let her take over and and run through a bunch of topics, and you'll probably find that your question will be answered. If not, pop it in there. We'll do our best to answer it. Uh, we're going to run for um, we've got an hour session, so we'll have a little Q and A at the end. So I'm going to pass over to Nikki now, and um, that's it from me for now. Thanks, Nikki. Thank you, Caroline and Glenn, who will be there furiously typing in the background, and thank you all to for coming along and joining us on the call this evening. I hope you get some uh, good little takeaways and gems of knowledge out of everything that we're going to share with you this evening. So here we are, using other people's music. Let's get into it. So first of all, let's define what we're actually here to talk about. What is a cover song or a rendition? Because, of course, we're going to acknowledge that not everybody uh, uses the term cover song. It's kind of a, a pop and a rock terminology. Quite often our classical and, and jazz and art music musicians might use something more like a, an interpretation or a rendition. But essentially for the purpose of tonight, it's all going to be the same kind of thing. That's what we're here to talk about. So a cover or a rendering is a performance or a new recording of a musical piece that has been written and quite usually performed by someone else. So it's already a song, a piece of music that exists, quite often has been performed, and then you want to go ahead and do your own version or, or maybe even stick close to the original, but you want to make it your own in some way. That's what we're here to talk about primarily. So one of the most common questions we get is, how do I register my cover version with APRA AMCOS? Or do I, in fact, register my cover version? So right off the top, it's really important that we clarify the fact that APRA and AMCOS look after the rights that are owned by composers, by songwriters, not recording artists. So purely for the people that wrote the words and music. That means when you're performing or releasing cover versions or renditions, our job is to pay the people that originally composed the piece, so not whoever is performing. So when you're out there performing live or if you're live streaming on Facebook, YouTube, TikTok or Instagram, you can submit a performance report. You're hopefully very familiar with the performance report. That report is where you're going to give us the venue or the streaming platform that you went live on, the date that you played, and your set list. And that set list will include your own originals, for which we pay you as the songwriter, and then, of course, your covers, any renditions that you performed. That enables us to pay the songwriters of the original. 
Now, for any releases that you pop up online on the audio platforms like Spotify, Apple Music or uh, YouTube and Facebook, they report to us directly. So you're not responsible for that. Those online platforms will report to us. And again, even though it's a cover that you've recorded, because we're paying the original composers, when we get that data from Spotify or Apple Music, we know to pay the original songwriters. This means that you would not register a cover version with us. The original song is going to already be registered. If not with us, then with one of our affiliate societies because we do have reciprocal agreements. We have agreements in place with other collecting societies all around the globe. So even if you're performing renditions or cover versions by songwriters from France or Germany or South Korea, we are able to share information with the performing rights organisations in those territories and we're still able to pay the songwriters overseas. So another really common question that follows that is, well, what do I do if I'm in a cover band? Can I join APRA AMCOS and can I get paid by APRA AMCOS? Again, because we pay original songwriters, if you purely perform in a cover band, then it may not be time for you to become an APRA AMCOS member yet, and we wouldn't have a royalty to pay you because you're not the songwriter. And absolutely, once you start writing your own music and performing your own music, please feel free to sign up, become an APRA AMCOS member, and we will pay you for your own original work. So if you're in a cover band and you want to go ahead and report the covers that you're performing, there are a couple of ways that it's possible to do so. Firstly, is hopefully someone that is with you in that band or group is an APRA AMCOS member. Hopefully they do write their own music. And therefore, because only one person in a band needs to report performances that are live streamed or live performed, they would be able to do that on behalf of the band. So again, live performance report, we will know who to pay. The other method that is now available is using music recognition devices. So it is possible to have these little devices installed in venues, be that big live music venues, small cafes, restaurants, community halls, any of these types of venues that have live music performed in them can opt to have a music recognition device in their, in their space. And this is it here. It's in conjunction with a company called Ordu. Now, funnily enough, Ordu is uh, financially backed by one of the members of ABBA because I would say that uh, ABBA is one of the, the bands that gets covered the most. So he probably had quite an interest in getting this happening. But essentially, it's a really tiny meter. You can see in the picture there, it's only just a little bit bigger than the wall socket. And these devices pick up audio in just 10 seconds, and then they convert the audio to data. So it doesn't transmit recordings of any type. It's not transmitting conversations or actual, you know, WAV files or MP3s. It converts that audio to, to data, zeros and ones, to send to our partner or do. Or do are then able to match the data that is sent across to their database of over 120 million tracks. And once the matches have all been made, they return that information to us and we're able to make payments based on the music that was played. So that's another great way of getting any, any cover versions in small venues, large venues, venues where you're in a cover band to have the music reported and paid. I did say I hope you're all familiar with live performance reports, but just in case you're not, here's a little glimpse at what they're all about. So let me start by saying, because I kind of inferred it a moment ago, but I just want to clarify if a venue, be that a large-scale music venue, a pub, 
a nightclub, a cafe, a restaurant, anywhere that makes music available to the public in a live performance type of way, they have to have permission to have that music there, to make the music publicly available. And they do that by taking out a license with APRA and AMCOS. Because our members have assigned certain rights to us, we're able to give that permission on behalf of the songwriter. So for example, a new restaurant opens up and every Friday night, they're gonna have live performers. They contact One Music Australia or One Music New Zealand, which is the licensing division of APRA AMCOS, and they get a One Music license. So the business will pay for that license We take the license fee and that's going to be where the royalties come from to pay the songwriters. So the onus there is on the venue. They take out the license, they get the permission. That means, as I've said, when you perform in these venues, you have permission to do these live performances of covers and renditions. And therefore, using your performance report, you ensure that the correct songwriters are getting paid. When you submit a live performance report, you have the option of three different types. A standard report covers almost everything. So 99% or maybe not 99, 92% of the time, you're going to be clicking on standard. And then you're going to add your set list, as I've mentioned, which you can do either one by one by searching for the title or you can pre-save set lists. So if you frequently perform the same set, you can pre-save that in your APRA AMCOS writer portal and then just attach that set list for every live performance. You'll notice there on the slide that there is the option to add other writers' works. And this is where your covers will go. So you just click on that, search for the song, um, the performer if you know it, and of course the writer's name if you know it. And that way you can add the covers that you performed. Obviously, we do have two other types of performance there, the DJ performance and the jazz classical. So just to make sure I've covered everything, DJs have their own performance reports, and that is to cater for the fact that in an hour, an average band might play, what, 20 to 30 songs, but a DJ might play 50 to 60 songs because of the, you know, the way they cut and change and all that sort of thing. So it allows for the additional volume of works that they would add to a set list, essentially. And then jazz and classical, also art music, neo-contemporary, that sort of thing. These are specifically for these types of music where the duration of a single song is going to be 10 minutes or more because obviously we can't, you know, if, if a jazz musician plays pieces that go for 15 minutes at a time, they're only going to play four songs in an hour. So it would be unfair to pay them at the same rate as a punk band that is performing 30 songs in an hour or or more. So jazz classical for durations, uh, pieces with durations of 10 minutes or more have a separate performance report as well. Let's move on from live performance to when you've made a recording of a cover version. And maybe you wanna go ahead and release that cover version because it's actually pretty damn good and you want the public to hear it. And hey, let's face it, there is huge value sometimes in breaking into a market through a cover version. Um, So here's a way to do it. If you're gonna make physical copies, CDs, cassettes, if that's your thing, or vinyl, then you can get a license from us, from AMCOS. It's called the Audio Manufacture License. And it allows you to make physical copies of somebody else's song. I will note that it doesn't cover the use of somebody else's musical piece in an advertisement. It doesn't cover any sampling. It doesn't cover use of the sound recording and I will come to that later as we go through. So this is purely 
for the words and music that you are going to sing and play when you record your rendition. It's actually a great little license. It has that, you know, you fill it in and it has a table on the form that allows you to get an, an estimate of what your license fee be is before you even send it in. Um, but just as an example, this license to make 100 copies of CDs and 100 pressings of vinyl for a six track cover EP costs about $270. So that, that's all, that's 200 copies in two different formats for six covers. So it's, yeah, it's not ridiculous. It's not out of, out of the way. And then, of course, when you sell these physical copies at the merch stand or to family, maybe, <laughs> whoever is buying, um, you get to keep all of the proceeds from that. So you don't have to worry about keeping any percentages aside to pay anybody else. What you make is yours. You've paid your license fee, and we take that fee and pay the original songwriters for those copies of their words and music that you've made. So that's physical releases, but then you've got digital releases. And here's the good news. In our territory, so Australasia, essentially, for all of the audio streaming platforms, Apple Music, Spotify, Amazon Music, those sorts of ones, they've already taken out the required mechanical licenses for you. So if you are going to go ahead and release your cover version on a streaming platform here in our territory, then you can go ahead and do that. You don't need to get any additional licenses for that. Now, this may not be the case in all territories. For example, the USA, you may find you need some additional licensing. So assuming that you are releasing your music through a digital distributor or digital aggregator, as they're sometimes called, which are companies like DistroKid, TuneCore, Ditto, GyroStream or CD Baby, those types of um, services that make your music available online. If you're releasing through them or if you're lucky enough to have a record label that is releasing music for you, then these companies will assist you in getting the correct licenses in place. But yeah, here in Australia, you're pretty much good to go. Of course, if you do have any questions about licensing here in Australia, please feel free to reach out to our media licensing team anytime. The email address medialicensing at apra.com.au and they will help you through that. So, when is your version actually considered an arrangement? So when have you really created something that is new and original and is not considered a cover version anymore? An arrangement from sort of the APRA AMCOS perspective is when you have added brand new structure or compositional elements that never existed in the original composition. So you've written brand new melodic structure and things like that to an existing composition. That's when you start to look at your work being an arrangement of somebody else's. It's really important to remember, this does not include changes to style, genre, key or tempo of the original work. So just because you've slowed something down or you're singing it a cappella with, you know, different voices doing different parts, that's not going to be an arrangement from a registration point of view. Now, when it comes to things like lyric changes and arrangements, we can't offer a license for that. So if you're going to make these types of alterations, and then want to register your work as its own copyright arrangement piece, you must get permission from the original copyright holders. So that could be the songwriters themselves, but most of the time it's going to be the publisher of those songwriters. Which brings us to 
can I register my arrangement with APRA AMCOS and get some songwriting royalties? So there are instances where yes, you can. The first instance is where the original work is out of copyright or in the public domain, which is a term you've probably heard of. For a work to be in the public domain, at least for the words and music, it means that the songwriters, all of them, if there are more than one, need to have passed away 70 years or more prior to today's date, essentially, <laughs> moving forward. So if the song is in the public domain, the words and the music are in the public domain, you can add new structure, make changes, and then register your arrangement with us as a new piece and receive royalties. The other time that you could register your own arrangement as its own copyright piece and receive royalties is if the piece is still in copyright, but you've obtained permission to make your arrangement and to receive writer credit for your new arrangement. Now that permission will have to be in writing and it will have a percentage that's due to you as well as a percentage of the royalties that will be due to the original songwriters. So there is a way in either circumstance without these either of these being the the case, if this is not the case for you, then you would not be able to register your own work, to, to register the arrangement as your own work. Here on the screen, you can see that we do have, of course, an arrangement option when you go to register a work. And if you click this one, it gives you some slightly different fields to complete. So not only are you going to give us the title, but you're going to be able to give us things like the title of the original piece that you've made an arrangement on. So if you've given your new arrangement a brand new name, you can give us both yours and the original one. And of course, the original composer's names, which will be important when you're giving them splits. If the work is out of copyright, it's in the public domain, then you still put the original writer's names in but you're going to allocate 0% of royalties to them because they don't, they don't get any royalties. It's now in the public domain. So we can still see the registration has your name as the arranger, their name as the composer. You would be receiving 100% of the royalties and they would be receiving zero because there's no longer any copyright due for, for their original work. Okay, here we go. We're trying something new. It's time to do a little bit of a woo quiz. What are we, how are we feeling? So don't stress out. This is not a knowledge quiz. This is an opinion quiz. This is a, hmm, what do you think? What do you think has happened in this case? So what we're going to do here, is it a cover or is it an arrangement? By which I mean, I'm going to play one track, which is the original artist's work. I'm going to play a second track, which is another artist then doing a version. And I just want you to throw out, do you think this earned the new artist writer credit as an arrangement? Like, did they get to do their own arrangement for this? Or was it treated as a cover? Okay, hope no one's, hope there's no anxiety happening now. It's for fun. It's just your opinion. Let's see what we think. So... This one should be ready to go. Original version. Some people like that. I know this already. I didn't try to pick tricky songs. Hopefully people are like, yeah, cool. So here is now the newer version of that song. Do you think that there was an arrangement, permission to make an arrangement and a writer credit given for this song? 
to this version. close oh it's super close exactly 50 50 exactly split down no 49 50, no 50 50 <laughs> okay oh, it's just split okay fabulous thank you for playing this is great so 47 percent of people said yes they think that this new artist was given the ability to register their own arrangement of this piece. And those people are correct. So there were new parts that were written for this particular version of Roxanne. And that's why there was additional writer credit given. So of course, uh, Sting still got his cut, but there was in fact new compositional ed elements added to that one and a new arrangement was registered. Here we go, round two, in that one. And. Okay, a little bit shorter on the clip this time. Another version, same song. And again, do we think that this writer was had their version treated as a cover or were they given some writer credit on their own arrangement? Boats are still coming in. The no's are very much streaming ahead this time. No pun intended on streaming, by the way. That's just how it looks to me. All right, looks like all the responses are in. 67% of people said no, this was not an arrangement. Good old Richard Cheese, who has done this cover of Welcome to the Jungle, had it treated as a cover and they are correct. This is a cover version. So even though it's a completely different tempo and genre cover version for that one and we have one more okay here we are third and final original track <laughs> Alrighty, last one, the version of Smells Like Teen Spirit, which of course, original artist Nirvana, is this a cover or was right to credit given on the arrangement? It's less dangerous here in 
Okay, had to throw in some Tori Amos there because I am a big fan. I chose songs tonight based on examples, not necessarily whether I love them or not, as much as I would have enjoyed doing that, but I am a big fan of Tori Amos. Okay, results are in. 79% of people thought that Tori got writer credit on her own arrangement of Smells Like Teen Spirit, but she did not. This is a cover version. So it is Kurt Cobain's estate that is getting paid for that one. So just coming back to our slide as to when is an arrangement, when is it a cover version, what we really look at and, and what is examined, first of all, permission. To make an arrangement of somebody else's song, you do need to get permission. But the, the, I think the really key thing is that it's not changes to style. It's not changes to in, in, instrumentation, key, tempo. It's really adding brand new melodies and things like that. That's what is key, key, key and permission. But I said that, but I'm reiterating. Okay, thanks for playing the poll. That was, that was great fun. I hope you had fun. It's just fun. Alrighty, so let's move right on. Oh, here we go. Yes. Two, the difference between a remix and a cover or a rendering. Now, I think it is, again, just important to highlight that there is that difference between the composition and the sound recording. So, of course, APRA and AMCOS here, we look after the songwriter. I have said it already tonight, I know, but... It helps to keep things nice and clear. Because we only look after the songwriter and their specific rights, that's who we pay, that's who we help out, that's any licensing that we do is for the, the use of the composition. Now, separately to that, when a song is recorded, there is, of course, copyright that applies to that sound recording. If you're going to be doing a remix, which is basically, do I need to explain? I think, I, I don't think I do, but a remix is where you've taken someone else's song and either like twisted it up and, and made it into something new, maybe even added parts yourself, but essentially you're taking someone else's recording of a song and judging it. Is that a word I could use? Perhaps so. Um, in that case, you are looking at both rights for the, the composition, the words and the music, and also their sound recording. And of course, that means if you want to go ahead and release your remix, you need to get permission for both words and music and sound recording. So that's number, number one thing to kind of keep in mind. Now, if you do want to get permission, this is some good things to know. First of all, do get permission. That's important. <laughs> now, if you've made a remix and you want to press up physical copies or you want to be able to provide digital copies, downloads and streams, then get in touch with AMCOS. I'll have that email address for you again at the end, media licensing at apra.com.au. But as I just mentioned, we can only license for the words and the music. So we're licensing you to make copies of the words and the music. Now, if you're in any doubt about whether you have the appropriate licensing, always get legal advice. And if not us, the people to go to are the Arts Law Centre of Australia. So artslaw.com.au. Now, because you have permission to create a remix, Again, just like an arrangement, it doesn't necessarily entitle you to get writer's credit for the remix that you've created. In fact, it's really, really common for remix artists not to get any shares of the writer composition royalties. APRA AMCOS would pay most remixes 
the, the royalties from Apra and Amcos would be paid for most remixes to the songwriters, just like a cover version. Royalties for the remixer, the artist who has created the new remix, would normally come from the sound recording. So apologies if that wasn't clear. A remix is out there, it exists in the world, but a lot of the time, APRA and AMCOS are still paying the original songwriters. The person who's made the remix is most often earning from the new sound recording they've produced. I hope that was clearer, apologies. So another fun quiz. Now, I'm not going to do a poll this time. We're just going to talk about these three examples that I've gotten. So these are three examples of very famous remixes by well-known producers. We're going to have a bit of a listen and just talk about did they get writer credit for these or not. So here's the first one. So you probably already recognize Seven Nation Army, originally the White Stripes. Now, that particular remix was done by Diamonds featuring Koisina. Um, it went huge. It's gone absolutely massive online, millions and millions of, of downloads and streams. But this one is treated as a cover. Now, I'm sure you would completely agree with me. If you are familiar with the original, it is drastically different. I mean, you sure you could sing along with it, but it sounds like a completely different song and it would appeal in most cases to a very different audience. Nonetheless, as different as this remix sounds, the writers that are getting paid are still Meg and Jack White. So Diamonds are getting any royalties that they're entitled to from the sound recording of that one. Next one. I'm a savage. Yeah. Classy, bougie, ratchet. Yeah. Sassy, moody, nasty. Yeah. Acting stupid. What's happening? What's happening? I'm a savage. So that is Savage, Megan the Stallion. Original song is her own release. This particular remix is by Major Laser, who are huge not only in the remix world doing dance mixes and dance hall mixes and all of that kind of stuff but of course they make their own music using lots of samples as well in this particular case major laser do get writer credit so it really does just come down to what's being arranged what's being given permission i don't think we could distinctively say that this version was more or less different than the Diamonds version of Seven Nation Army. But Major Lazer have an official agreement in place and they have writer credit to make this remix. Therefore, we pay both Megan and the great guys in Major Lazer for that one. Last one. I think you'll recognise it. Or maybe not from the <laughs> All righty, so I'm guessing that you picked up that was not, in fact, Stevie Nicks. Instead, that was David Guetta featuring Lainey Gardner. Um, doing their remix of Dreams. Now, in this case, again, as different as that whole musical landscape was just there, and David Guetta is a huge producer. I'm guessing most people on this call tonight know his name, if you are a fan of his or not. Um, he did not get any writer credit for this. So, again, with this one, treated like a cover and... Stevie Nicks, maybe Lindsay Buckingham as well from Fleetwood Mac are receiving the writer credit for this. Okay, let's keep moving. So sampling, 
Sampling is not a cover version or an arrangement. It sits as its own separate thing. So sampling, of course, is when you're taking portions of another artist's original work and then putting it into your own new piece. Sampling also requires two different types of permission because you are using both the composition that somebody else has written and owns and the sound recording that somebody else owns. Now, when you're going to use a sample, it is really important to get permission to clear that sample before putting it in your track. And when you get permission and then you go to register it with us, we will ask to see the permission that you have. We will need it in writing. And of course, that permission is going to state explicitly how much of a royalty share the original songwriters are receiving for the sampled portion of their work in your new piece. Another kind of fun way of using uh, another artist's work is by interpolation or quotation. So this is really quite simple, uh, quite similar to sampling. Oh, didn't expect to say that. I won't say it three times fast. This is where you're avoiding using the sound recording, the original sound recording, but you're still going to use somebody else's words and music. So it's not a cover version. You're re-recording it and then taking your re-recorded version and using that. You still need to clear permission, of course, for the words and the music, but it does get around having to clear permission for the sound recording use. There's also another way that you can use people's work called quoting in terms of text. So we could be talking about a script, a book, a poem, anything that hasn't previously been set to music. You're maybe looking at some of Nick Cave's written poetry or one of his books and you want to actually write some music and set his words to music. That would be a perfect example of quotation. In this case, APRA AMCOS don't hold the rights so you would need to go to the agency that does hold literary rights, and that is the Copyright Agency Limited. So reach out to them if you intend to use any kind of text uh, in your musical works. Now, a little bit about synchronisation. Um, synchronisation is a right that occurs any time your words and music are put with visual media. So when it comes to cover versions, the reason that we highlight synchronisation is that actually you as a songwriter own your right of synchronisation. It doesn't get assigned to APRA and AMCOS, which means we can't licence it for you. Now, if you sign up to a publisher, they will manage your sync right for you and so they would be able to licence it. But if you're unpublished, if you don't have a signed publishing agreement, then you retain that right. Now, because it's not an automatic assignment to organisations like APRA AMCOS, when it came to a platform like YouTube or Instagram, where there's visual media and the composition together, it actually meant if you were going to put a cover on those platforms, you did, we couldn't licence the right. And so you may have found in the past that you had any cover versions on these platforms taken down or silenced. Happily, there is now a limited license in place. So if you do want to upload your performances of cover versions to YouTube, Facebook, Instagram or TikTok, this limited license most likely covers your cover. <laughs> so the, the caveats here are it has to be on your personal page so it can't be on a promotional page or for any kind of commercial use. Um, but as long as you're just kind of uploading a cover version you've done to your personal page, this limited license should cover you to do that. And when you do that, we rely on the streaming platform to report the streams of your cover versions to us. 
And they do that by using music recognition technology, essentially. So YouTube has content ID. And content ID works in two different ways. There's audio and audiovisual fingerprinting technology. And then there's melody recognition. So the fingerprint tech is actually really, really quite good and quite accurate. Melody recognition is not quite as advanced, but it still helps to identify different performances of the same work. A copyright owner at any time can claim a work manually. So if a cover version that you do does suddenly pop off and, you know, Taylor Swift finds out about it, she may want to claim the work. They, she could then have her people lodge a claim with YouTube. But hopefully she thinks it's a fantastic version and, um, and lets it go and is just happy to collect the, the money that way. So all done through content ID. And the way to ensure that your music is tagged, including your cover versions, and is uploaded for content ID, you have to go through a digital aggregator, digital distributor, or record label. And they will ensure that your music is correctly tagged and then uploaded into the online platforms for content ID and recognition. Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Also very similar in that using a digital aggregator, distributor, or a record label is the way to make sure that your music will be tagged so that content ID, uh, sorry, so that audio matching can occur and the, then when streams are reported to us, we're able to pay the correct songwriters. There's a little bit here on this slide about the fact that Facebook and Instagram and TikTok need to have the music in their own audio library. So it's the library on Facebook and Instagram and the sounds library on TikTok. And just as I was saying, the way to make sure your music is there is by, by those third party organizations, the digital aggregators. When it comes time to get permission, maybe you do want to do a bigger release. Maybe you do want to make your remix official. We can help you to get in touch with the people that you need permission from. So the first step would be to go to our website and choose the search option and then search the song catalog. In there, you can give us the title, the writer names, if you know them, and the performer. And you should find a match for the work that you're looking for. If that's not coming up with anything, of course, you can try Google. You can try some of our affiliates like ASCAP overseas. But if you're still getting nowhere, we have a premium research form on our website as well. So you can fill that in and our research team will delve right into it and find out who those copyright holders are to help you out. And then once you know who you need to contact, be that a writer or the publisher, writers, we may be able to assist further, but if it's a publisher, we actually have a publisher contact list on our website. So again, use the search feature, this time search website, just type in publisher contact and that'll come right up. This is a list of each person that looks after synchronization permission and licensing permission at the publishers. So you'll know who to reach out to. We're getting close to the end. So here we go. Public domain. I'm sure you've heard of it. I meant it already tonight, but here's some things to know. When copyright expires on a work, it's considered to be in the public domain. And that means that you essentially don't need permission to be able to do what you want to do with it. Sing it, re-perform it, remix it, whatever it might be. Also, as I mentioned, assuming that you've done something quite original and put your own spin on this piece of public domain copyright, that non-copyright work that you've used, you may be able to register it with us as your own arrangement. Now, if you're not sure about whether something is able to be used uh, as copyright free, then we've got the Australian Copyright Council, the Arts Law Centre of Australia, and in New Zealand, the in NZ Intellectual Property Office to get in touch with for more information. Now, really generally speaking, here are the expiration dates. For a musical work, so the words and the music, if that was released while the writers lived, then 
a work will fall into the public domain 70 years after they pass away in Australia or 50 years in New Zealand. And similarly with the sound recording, if that sound recording was released around about the time that it was made, uh, then it's in the public domain 70 years after it was first published in Australia and 50 years in New Zealand. One more fun, super quick question. Does Disney own Happy Birthday to You? So you may be aware that movies and podcasters and filmmakers have avoided using the Happy Birthday to You song for years and years and years for fear of being sued. But was it actually Disney who was the big bad wolf on this one? Was it Disney that um, was stopping the use? Again, it doesn't matter if you get this right or wrong. I'm going to pop up the, the question here. It's just for fun. It's fun. Here we go. Oh, the nose, I won't say streaming ahead, racing ahead. Oh, look at that. That's the fastest one ever. You're all amazing. Well done. Yes, 90% of you said no, Disney does not own happy birthday to you and you are 100% correct not only do they not own it they never claimed it it was actually uh, a different publisher entirely that used to claim that but as of 2015 that claim was deemed invalid in the US and as of 2017 in Europe it is it's also been proclaimed copyright free so no claims on that one well done I had to look that up. So there you go. I mean, I had a feeling. <laughs> but anyway, okay, while we're talking about public domain and things you can use, fair dealing. Now, a lot of you have probably heard of fair use and that you can do a lot of things under fair use. Well, fair use is for the US only. It does not apply here in Australia. Here, we have fair dealing laws and they're actually quite specific. So if whatever new work you're creating falls really specifically or the use of the music, of someone else's music, falls into one of these five categories, then you may have an argument to be able to go ahead and use that material uh, without seeking any additional permissions. So things like research and study, criticism or review, parody or satire. Now that's a fun one because you'll see there on the slide, New Zealand has these similar rules but not the parody satire exception. I'm sorry to our cousins over in Aotearoa. You can't get away with that one. <laughs> uh, reporting the news and legal advice. So if the use of music that you're going to, to broadcast or do what you want to do with falls into one of these, you may be able to go ahead based on this fair dealing law. But I would definitely seek legal advice on this one. Um, Quite often the substance of the work is tied to whether you can use it rather than the amount. So it's not like you can use 10% um, or 30% or whatever you might have heard or 10 seconds. It's, it can be quite specific. So I do think if you're hoping to get away with fair dealing, get some advice on that one. And I'm cutting it super fine, but that's it. We've reached the end. Loads of information in here tonight. I am very warm under this light in here. Thank you so much for playing along in our polls. I hope it was a little bit different tonight. I hope you enjoyed it. 